Welcome back everyone to the closing wrap up of day one of SuperCloud 4. It's our fourth episode where we unpack the hottest technologies in the cloud, cloud next generation. Obviously generative AI is our topic. We have a boatload of content. We just dropped a bunch today, tomorrow, a whole day, all day going to be streaming here on thecube.net. Check it out, supercloud.world. That's the place to go. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Here in the closing sessions with me and Dave is Sarbjeet Joel, Cube alumni, analyst, expert, influencer. Sarbjeet, good to see you. Nice and Rob Streche, Cube analyst and for Cube Research. Rob, uh, great interview you did with the NFL. Um, we're wrapping up day one. We had um, some in, live in studio performance, another successful SuperCloud. Guys, congratulations. Yeah, it's not over yet. Yeah. Day, day two tomorrow, like you said. Rob, what's your take? We just did yeah. a riff with Howie Shoes, great panel. What did you see today? What was the big takeaway? I, I think, again, to what we've been discussing for months now is that large language models and building your own chat GPT is going to be really far to the left on our power law. And it's going to be very few that are making those huge investments and huge data investments and those massive models and that segmented LLMs or SLMs are going to be kind of where the entire business is at and be that on-prem or in cloud, it's going to have a cloud operating model behind it. I know you and your team at theCUBE Research and Advisory, formerly Wikibon, have been doing a ton of briefings with customers over the past couple of weeks. Dave and Rob and Sarjeet, what are you guys hearing that you heard today that connects the dots? What are companies saying? Are they, uh, is everyone the frog in boiling water or are people actually getting it? Or what's the state of the market and what do we hear from these experts today? What ties it all together? Yeah, I mean, just kicking it off, I think that what we've been hearing and what we continue to hear today was that one platform is not going to fit all and that you're going to see things consolidating from a data services and data features perspective in those data platforms, but that one platform will not dominate at all and your data won't all be consolidated down. You're going to have to have governance and lineage and a number of other things across all of these different data platforms. I think is, I'll just say, the one thing we've consistently heard and we heard again today and we were making fun of it is, we've been doing AI forever, right? And, and yet I think we're going to start to see the AI haves and the AI have nots. We're not seeing it, we just have earnings numbers. I know we're going to talk about it a little bit. Microsoft seems to be an AI have Right, Google has AI, but you know we're not seeing the numbers. Of course, it could be advertising. But I think we're going to see a bifurcation of the the, for the contenders from the pretenders. Alphabet was a solid results. Like Google, I think a little bit of manipulation going on to make their numbers profitable. I'm, I would not judge them out yet. We'll see what Amazon does this week. Well, the stocks are down. I mean, sorry, Google's way down. Yeah. Google's down. Um, Microsoft. Microsoft's way up. Microsoft's up in after hours three and a half percent. Google's down Quite. six and a half percent. Oh, yeah. Amazon, people don't know what to do with it because Amazon earnings come up later this yeah, week. Well, this, this brings up the conversation that I've been seeing, so I'd love to get your reaction too after, is Rob, we've been hearing people say, nothing's yet going to production. We're still hearing that drumbeat, certainly on the enterprise side, but yet we heard from Intel, there's a production boost on productivity numbers in AI. There's a lot more in production than people are leading on to be. So I kind of see this as classic enterprise or new AI kind of, I won't say bolt on, but like there seems to be an AI adoption rush in low hanging fruit or more problematic or challenging AI workloads that just can't be bolted on and thrust into production. What yeah, do you I mean, think? I think that the chatbot thing is out there, right? I mean, I think a lot of the low hanging fruit was I need to build an HR chatbot that you know allows people to do their direct deposit and figure that out real quick. And that was a low hanging fruit of taking all of my HR, you know, policies and procedures. And valuable, despite one. your saying poo-pooing it. What? The chatbots, that's valuable. I'm not poo-pooing chatbots. Yeah, you said, oh, it's low end. Well, no, it's low it's no, it's, it's, no, it's been there, done that, it's been figured out. So, I mean, on the spectrum. Try calling your cable company and just testing out their <laughs> chatbot. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> sucks. They, their version of production <laughs> is a whole other ball game. It's like, yeah, you can't say, gonna, Kate, that's <laughs> like saying, okay, okay Dave, <laughs> don't even go there. Okay, the, what the point was is that you have chatbots on one, it's easy to figure out. Co-pilots is now the hot thing because people can see direct benefits. The third wave is the more complex cloud native, AI native, predictive stuff. That's a lot harder. So when you map that on to Rob's point, yeah, you can if you, if you count production as low end or entry level, Check. easy to figure out yeah. with well, data. But again, we'll have some people on, enterprises on that tomorrow that will talk about how they've gone and implemented it. You have some of the, 
I think people, and you know, Aaron from the NFL was talking about the fact that, hey, you got to look at, we need to know the impact of actually rolling this AI out because they have, you know, NFL has unions they have to deal with. They have other franchises that aren't under their jurisdiction. You start to look at all of the people that you have to bring along into this in any corporation. There's a lot of, a lot of politics that needs to be dealt with within there as well. And Jeff Boudreau from Dell said, we got, we got all this data in our services organization. We're LLMing that, and then we're going to give real-time answers to customers. Yeah. And that's a huge part of the way in here. Yeah, I think media is, media is hyping the, the fear of AI into the masses, you know, the Hollywood strike, you know, mm -hmm. writers and all that, like yeah. big, you know, debacle. <laughs> all in all, I think the productivity boost is number one use case for, for people. So if, if you go by people, process, technology, that sort of, you know, frame of thinking, um, people are getting more productive. We need productivity. We have been going down in productivity in the US uh, for quite a number of years now, but now this AI will let us come back, ramp up the productivity. That's number one. Number two I, pattern I've seen is a lot of people are doing the, the POCs and a lot of proof of concept and smaller projects, mm -hmm. but the last mile of AI is hard. You know, so for enterprise to... We describe last mile. Last that's mile has come like, up multiple times. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean? So that is, that means like having the true real use cases where you have that predictability, predictability and accuracy um, coming from the large language model. So the app that's fully in production, that last mile yeah. is the, that final piece of the yeah. puzzle. It's in production, actually, you can say. Yeah. Last mile is the production, right? So that is hard. Uh, of course, we have been doing AI for a long, long time, and that's like generic yeah. AI, if you will, not the generative AI. Generative AI it has hallucination problem, and it will. I, I think I agree. I think I agree with you on that, and everyone else. I think the the, the changeover that's happening, at least what I'm seeing, I'd love to get your thoughts on this, guys. Yes, it's a radical shift to the new model. The adjustments going on at the data layers, even the startups we had in here earlier, the young startups, they're even feeling that the adoption is not there because the people aren't ready for it. Then, I mean, who's really ready for generative AI? It's like, Dave, changing the airplane out at 34,000 feet with a whole new engine you've never been trained on before. Well, you got to reset your data, rethink your data. I just want to comment on the productivity. The global productivity, the best number I could come up with was 1.2% growth. That's anemic. But the GDP this quarter is supposed to be in the US is like 5%. And it's because there's full unemployment, but the, it's not due to productivity. Right, and so we, unless we see in the productivity numbers, you know, a big boost, Brynjolfsson says 3% minimum, I'll be disappointed if it's not 4% or higher. Unless we see that, then this thing could be overhyped. I don't think that's the case. I think we will see it, but to your point, well, it's, people aren't ready. Well, generative is new. I mean, we, the comment on Howie's thing was, that Arun pointed out from Intel was, someone said, I don't want to give up my co-pilot. They didn't have it last year. Right. They don't want to give it up. Like, that's like when you first started surfing the web and used Yahoo, like, okay, I don't need to but, open but up I, a book anymore. But I think that is the underlying thing. They didn't build the co-pilot. The co-pilot may be trained on some of their own code per se, but it's not necessarily their code. They didn't have to go build it. it. That goes to the last mile thing. It's like, okay, I can believe this because it's only been trained on my data plus a little bit outside of how to program or what have you. And I think that's a lot easier to get adoption on. I think the problem is still the use case is not well defined in how and what the SLA will be for the answers in that. We're all fine with ChatGPT kind of lying to us every now and again and hallucinating and what have you. But I think when you start to get into certain cases like yeah. financial services, going and saying, hey, I recommend the stock to you, there's a human in the loop on that because they can't trust it to be yeah. fully autonomous in that way. But having said that, I, I've seen some vendors doing a great job at it, you know? Like, for, for example, VMware, like, are very, very technology vendors in this case, right? But there are banking and others as well. So uh, VMware is training the, their models on a smaller machine, you know, A400 or like within like few hours they trained their model on their APIs, on their SDKs, on their scripting language, so that their practitioners of their technology can benefit from it, right? Mm -hmm. So I, th I think that, yeah. that is a great use case for technology providers to at least first train 
these models on their technology so so that when programmers are using their API, they just have to just say it or just type the first three letters and it, yeah. it, it completes the rest. Yeah. You know? I think building their own co-pilot for themselves yeah. makes total sense. I think the yeah. technology vendors, it's a lot clearer use case, especially in supportability and yeah. usability of the product set. That makes total sense. But some other vendors are not. You know, I, I was at HashiConf, I, I was watching them and I went there for half a day. Like, I, they are kind of, like, kind of negating it. It's like, oh, we'll do this. They're poo-pooing it, yeah. yeah they're poo well, they're, maybe they're trying to be contrarian, because yeah. everybody because everybody else is not. Well, yeah. DevOps, they, they should DevOps be the one who are, who are actually, you who would think? should be. Well, they're too busy Terraform, with their cell license. Terraform. Yeah, talk to me and I'll, I'll deploy your infrastructure. could be at risk yeah. with AI. <laughs> Terraform could be at risk with AI. Yeah, I, think I mean, so. you can, yeah. all right guys, we are on the analyst panel. We're going to have two more segments coming out after the end of the day. Google public sector as well as a healthcare expert. They're going to unpack a little nuances of AI, but guys, final question for this uh, analyst angle on SuperCloud 4. What's your takeaway uh, and it, uh, from SuperCloud 4 that you just mentioned, or and go a little deeper, and what are you going to take away to advise clients? Rob, as you talk to more enterprises every day, Sarbjeet, Sarbjeet as well, Dave, what are you going to walk away with from here that you're going to have in your repertoire to advise and clients and custom companies that are looking for leadership and direction on how to formulate the AI I mean, conversation. I mean, it sounds so obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway. It, you know, you just can't get caught up in the hype. I mean, you, you, can, you can, it's great, we love it. it it's, it's sort of, um, you know, intoxicating, but you got to get down to the business case. You got to figure out the use cases and you got to make money yep. at this thing. And that's, to me, making money is all about labor productivity. And if you can get there, then it's going to pay for itself and you're going to win in the market against your competitors. And if you don't, if you're just running experiments all day, you're going to fall behind. Assuming that Gen AI has legs, right? We, we can, I, I think sure, it, it, does, it, it does, right? So you have, number one thing you want to do is train your practitioners and train your decision makers as well, your leadership as well, what it is, how you can leverage it. And I see that a lot of variation on the spectrum and some companies people know in some companies yeah. that they, what it is and how they can leverage it. In some companies they are like, well, what is it? We don't want to, mm -hmm. like they're kind of afraid to just go there, right? right? So train, 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 that's that's my advice. Yeah, and I, I think the advice is clear use case, have focus, do a lot of experimentation around that, but it has to be core to your mission, your company's mission, so that you can get to an ROI. And, and define what success means at the end of the day yeah. for that because you don't want to be just blindly doing experiments all over the place, okay. figure out how do we get there and how do we, you know, once we are there, what is the value that the company or the customer is going to extract from that? It's a consummate do more with less. Isn't I it? mean, I'll end with my little Moneyball quote, Dave, you know what I'm going to say next. There's a scene in Moneyball where the owner of the Red Sox says to Billy Bean, if every company isn't working, moving to your model, the baseball model, the, the big data model, as they say, they're going to be dinosaurs. And I think, to me, it was clear from day one that if every business and entrepreneur isn't thinking, because we had a lot of entrepreneurs here, from companies as well, aren't rethinking how to execute with data. I think data is the new middleware. And you can have great infrastructure, the new data middleware is going to be refactored. At the end of the day, it's the apps, the North Star, what you're trying to do. If they're not refactoring with data and thinking about how they're using their data as intellectual property, they're going to be dinosaurs. So I think that to me is my advice. Focus on your data, figure out how it works with the models. What's the end-to-end -end workflow? What's the application? Because this is, this is, a, this is a generational shift. Hatterberg over Pena. Yeah, <laughs> play Pena. All right, we'll be back with two more segments to end the day. Google public sector and healthcare experts at SuperCloud 4. See you later.